We don't need someone who just got back from Iraq, couldn't find a job, and is now being told to police regular citizens the same way you policed in war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not right. Yeah. You need Completely. to have people that understand the psychology of the neighborhoods they're policing. Yeah. That means as a cop, you should be seen at the PTA meeting, you should be seen at the corner store, and you should be seen in your patrol, on your patrol, not just on your patrol. Because yeah. when you're just riding through on your patrol, you're just like a you're just like a monster that comes through. Yeah. You're perceived as just somebody here to pick somebody up. You aren't seen as a savior, you aren't seen as an ally because you don't ever get out of the car. You're not a person. You're you are just a cop. You exactly. are that exactly that, exactly. which is the the vilified thing right exactly. now. So, so with the new year um, approaching, what do you see as the key the key progressions and changes at this point that we should be that, that, that a regular individual should be trying to make? I well, mean, I, again, I'm, I'm, just I'm, hearing about all the different the base level community stuff yeah. with your barbershops and things like that. Do you think just more things like that are, are, are something that the, the regular person can do Absolutely. and to take do, a yeah, responsibility I, I, for themselves exactly. and their own community? You have to do locally what you can do. Yeah. You got to vote locally. You got to think locally. You got to act locally. You got to buy locally. Because that's what, like, Ferguson is 70% black. Mm. Yeah. Think about that. Seventy yeah. percent, like, like the mother of that child said, I've lived here my whole life. Darren Wilson moved here. Yeah. She has more rights to be yeah, in that community yeah, and to crazy. determine what goes on. But if you're in the community, you have to be active. Yeah. Your police chief or sergeant should know you. You should have a community board and push for a community advisory board or a community liaison board on, uh, uh, for your police department. Well, Mike, how do they make that happen? You vote for an alderman. You vote for a councilman. Make them do it or vote their ass out. Yeah. You know, demand that your demand that your policeman. You can call my wife. Tell me that you can call the police. You can have the police come to your child's school. That child, your child school, the PTA meeting, that P, the, the policeman who polices your community should have to introduce himself to the parents at the PTA meeting. Parents should take their ass to the PTA meeting, Parent Teacher Association. Yeah. You, the only way these problems are going to get solved is if they're solved at a local level and they grow nationally. Yeah. You know, our constitution and our republic is made in a way so that federal government can't just shoot mandates down to state and local laws because that disrupts the sovereignty of states. But it can go the other way. But it has to remain a grassroots movement and that on a local level, you have to become so active that you cannot be ignored. And that changes the fabric of the way things work in your community. Yeah, I truly believe that because I have a dual, you know, with me, it's going to be either or. We're going to work it in the way that the system allows us to because we're a free pub republic that's based on voting, that's based on you know, it's a democratic republic, or we're going to do what our forefathers did and burn it to the ground and start over. Yeah. You know, it's dealt, those are the only two ways. There is no other way. Either you get it right within the way the system has allowed for us to do it right, and that means the system and allies within the system have to comply, or we burn it to the ground and, and that's start why, over. I mean, that's why the crazy... The, the, the bloody mindedness of the system is it's got to bend and it's, it's got to break surely because the the best solution for everyone is the first solution there, Absolutely. rather than it having to be a public uprising Absolutely. which again it feels more and more on a on a global scale it feels more and more likely and closer and closer to that absolutely absolutely because people are tired yeah people are tired people are tired of fighting wars and they don't know why yeah people i mean people don't even know why they hate each other anymore yeah you know, I don't even know why the police hate black men anymore. It ain't like we out there shooting at the police, yeah. which we could be. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. You could you could sit there at the store, man, and someone could lay on the top of a roof, take an AR-15 and put a bullet through your head. Mm. It ain't hard. But yeah. the fact that that's not happening in the community shows you this community ain't no hyper-violent community. It's a community without jobs. And you as a policeman should be advocating to bring jobs back to your community because that makes your that makes your job easier because then you're just patrolling the TV factory, making sure no one's stealing the TV. Yeah, yeah. You aren't worrying about 30 kids standing out on the block trying to find excitement. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Completely. Well, is the intro to distraction. This piece of fiction is the intro to distraction. This piece of fiction is the intro to distraction. This piece of fiction is the intro to destruction. This piece of fiction is the intro to destruction. This
piece of fiction is that 